place in history. We are at the Twin Mill here in Barrie, and joining me is Amanda Gustin, the Public Programs Manager at the Vermont Historical Society. Amanda, tell me why there's a mill in Barrie. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite buildings in Barrie. Uh, if you drive down North Street, you've probably passed this building a hundred times, and it may look a little different to you, but you're not sure why, what's going on here. So this is a mill, it's a grist mill. Uh, so it was originally used to grind down wheat or corn into meal, into flour or corn meal. And as you can see up on the top of the building there, this was built in 1844. Uh, so it's called the Twing Mill uh, after a guy named Joshua Twing. And this mill sort of has a story to tell about the early industrial base of Barrie and how Barrie became a thriving community in the first part of the 19th century. So Joshua Twing was born in 1784 in Wilbraham, Massachusetts. And with his family, he moved to Vermont when he was 11 years old uh, in 1795. And the Twing family settled roughly in this area and in North Barrie area. And Joshua was one of those sort of really ambitious, really, really sharp uh, people who really saw uh, this new state of Vermont as a huge opportunity uh, to make a name for himself and to, to build things. So uh, he apprenticed himself to a machinist uh, and a blacksmith, and he learned sort of the engineering trade. He learned math, he learned design, he learned how to, to make things with his hands. And in 1805, uh, he was just 21 years old, but he'd saved up enough money to buy a sawmill uh, right near here, roughly on this same site here in North Barrie. And that was the start of it. Over the next couple of decades, he builds out a whole industrial complex in this part of North Barrie. Uh, he builds a sawmill right near there. He builds the first iron foundry in the state of Vermont. So soon he is making lumber. He is making iron products of all kinds and shapes. And that starts to get more and more specialized. He makes some early, early tools for the granite industry, uh, among other things. He makes stoves. He makes sort of custom pieces for homes, a little bit of everything. And he's only 21 years old. When he starts this whole thing, yeah, he's 21. Um, this, this all continues over decades until 1844 when he builds this mill here. This is just a stunning architectural building on the outside and on the inside. You can see it's brick. It's highlighted with berry granite. Um, all of the sort of foundation pieces are berry granite because a grist mill, right? You've got two huge... Um, millstones grinding fire between it. It creates a lot of vibrations. It creates a lot of weight. So there's a lot going on in this building and uh, the granite helps the building be especially stable for all this movement and this vibration and everything going on there. And this mill sort of helps inaugurate more business for him because he says, you know what, this mill is so great, it can be replicated in other parts. So he uh, makes the iron parts for the interior of the mill out of his own foundry. And then he has a team of engineers and architects and designers that he will send and supervise and design mills for you. So this is sort of an archetype mill for the Northeast. And he goes all over the Northeast and he builds more mills uh, in a lot of other places, taking advantage of this, this industrial revolution that's going on in America at the time. And he is such a big deal in this part of Barrie, this whole complex, the sawmill, the foundry, the mill, and their home across the street on a lot of early maps of Barrie is labeled Twingville. At this place in history.